Welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at PID settings. Now in this we're not going to go through and show you how to set up PID settings on things like NAPM, PixHawk, NASI32, CC3D, but what I want to do is go through the concepts and explain what PID is actually doing and what it's all about. Now I did ask at the beginning of October what you as my subscribers wanted to see. And the top thing above everything else was a video on PIDs. So the detail in this video was originally part of a hidden video that was linked to those subscribers who asked the specific question. But because there's such a requirement for it, what I'm doing is I'm re-editing the video, bringing it up to date and popping a little bit of flight footage in there so that those of you that don't understand some of my English acronyms and descriptions can kind of see a little bit more detail what we're talking about. So thank you to all of those subscribers that asked the question. The model in front of us here is something called a Nighthawk Pro. Now we've already done reviews on this model. This is one of those pre-built 260, 280 class quads that you can buy pre-ready to rock and roll and you can fly it. And we've done a couple of things with this and it is a beautiful flying machine with lots and lots of power. But one of the things I've done is I've just connected it up to the PC. I've changed it from its default PID configuration for roll and pitch which is by default the proportional is set to 4.0 and what I've done is I've doubled that to 8.0 and here's what it looks like when it's flying. So you can see it's kind of stable but as soon as I flick left or right and flick in a roll you can see but also you can hear the oscillations in the motors and the reason for that is the P or proportional part of the loop is actually over correcting. So one of the things that we're going to do is to have a look at what P, I and D actually do as part of a PID loop and I'm going to try and explain it the way that it was explained to me back when I first started to learn about PID control loops back in the day of pneumatic control systems. So let's start the slides and get through the detail. So let me explain what PID actually is, why we need it, and what it does. So there's a couple of things we need to think about before we get into the video. First of all is that the PID theory is very complicated, and there is an awful lot written about it, and the idea is with these videos, as I've said, is to get it across in layman's terms so that it's easier to understand. I'm going to use my experience over the past two or three years tuning multi-copter boards, but also my training and experience as an electronics and pneumatic engineer where PID control systems were absolutely part of how that stuff worked and tuning and optimizing them was par for the course. I am going to use some analogies as part of this to help explain some of these PID things without resorting to graphs and equations the analogies aren't perfect and I know that for those of you that are engineers or mathematicians out there it isn't perfect but the idea is it will be good enough. If you do want to know more once you've watched the video there are going to be a couple of places on the next slide that you can go to to have a read. Uh, they will resort to equations and graphs quite quickly uh, but the second one in particular I'm going to talk about it was very good because it talked about relating to the PID settings to physical systems so it helps you kind of mentally imagine what's actually going on. So the three places that you can go to find some more information. The first one, there's some really good articles on Wikipedia that go through PID control loop principles. The second one is the one that I would really recommend. If you Google for PID without the PHD, it's our author is Tim Westcott. Really good document this. It goes into quite a bit of detail, but it tries to explain some of the more tricky parts using physical models. So uh, plumbing, motors, moving servos, and that really helped me in particular relate some of the advanced control theory to real life physical systems and kind of help me remember some of the stuff from 20 odd years ago. Last place to have a look is obviously the flight controller manual yourself. The PID loops are different in every controller and the numbers that you need to put in and the amount that you need to change each number by is different. So you just need to spend a bit of time reading through it, having a look at the wikis, having a look in the forums to figure out what the best increments are to get the perfect tune. 
So now we know that, let's talk about what PID actually is and how those pieces work. So the first part of the PID loop is the P, which is proportional. Now proportional's job is probably the easiest to explain, uh, demonstrate and also tune. Proportional's job is to actually correct any error. So if the multicopter is supposed to be horizontal and one side is down, then proportional's job is to push that back up as quickly as it can. The amount of P or proportional dictates how hard it tries to get back to where it was. If we use a physical system to kind of illustrate the point, then I'd like you to imagine cistern above a toilet. Now this cistern is full of water to a predetermined level and there's a valve at the top. When you flush the toilet the cistern will empty and the valve at the top will open fully to let the water in and as the water rises in the cistern and gets towards the top that predetermined level that valve is slowly closing until eventually it reaches the right level and the valve is completely closed. That is a classic proportional system that you come into contact with several times a day. On the craft, a symptom of the proportional being too high is that if it's too high, it will try too hard to get back to the level and it will actually overshoot. Then it will try and correct the error again and now it will undershoot and then it will overshoot and undershoot. So when P is too high, what's happening is it's actually giving too hard a response and actually going past where it needs to be and then that is, error is then having to be fixed in turn. Integral. Integral is a slightly more interesting one. Integral not only corrects for the error but also accounts for the duration as well. So if we think about that same system that we've just been talking about, but this time there's actually a hole in the bottom of it and it has a leak. The water that's running out the bottom, as that opens the valve at the top, there will be water coming in the top as well to try and maintain that level that we need. But it will never get back to the right level because the water that's going in is the same amount of water that's coming out the leak at the bottom. Integral's job is to actually take account of that sustained difference from where it needs to be and put a little bit more water or control in and actually put that water back to the level it needs to be. So in a flight controller this is the one that does things like maintains a particular attitude. So if you're trying to fly forward and what you're finding is the nose is rising all the time then that is because that little sustained change which is letting the nose drift up is not being taken care of by the integral part of the PID loop so you haven't got enough I. D is a slightly wacky one and it's more difficult to explain D as part of a physical system but D is easy to think of as the speed that P and I work at. If P is how hard the system tries to get back to where it needs to be, I is there to correct for any sustained differences from where you want it to be, and D is how quickly the PID loop is trying to get it back there, you've got a reasonable understanding of what the three parts of the PID loop do. Knowing that, then we can actually talk about a way to test each part of P, I and D by doing some basic flying with a multicopter to figure out whether or not we have too much, too little, or just enough of each of these three pieces. So let's talk about that next. The way we test whether or not we have enough proportional control as part of PID is very simple. And that makes sense because proportional is the easiest part of the loop to explain, understand. Too much proportional in the model, as we've already explained, will cause the model to wobble when you've finished a manoeuvre. And that's because proportional is pushing too hard, it's overshooting where it wants to be, and then it's having to correct for that overshoot, which then sends it back the other way, and again and again until eventually it settles down. So the way to check for this is to fly your craft and to do some aggressive left-right manoeuvres and to watch whether or not that as you let go of the stick the craft isn't wobbling too much. 
If it's wobbling too much, then you have too much proportional. The ideal way to tune proportional is to increase it until you start to get the wobble and then take it down just to below where those wobbles are happening and a maximum of two or three little wobbles as it finishes the maneuver is absolutely fine. That means you've got P in about the right place. Integral is easy to check as well. Integral is about fixing that sustained deviation that we talked about when you've got an open tap or a leak at the bottom of water and there's a little bit going in the top but it never quite tops it back up to the level it needs to be. The way we check for this is we can start and do some fast forward flight, we can dip the nose down and fly along and what we're looking for is to make sure that the fast forward flight that we're not seeing that nose creep up. And that nose creeping up is a classic indicator that we haven't got enough integral because that integral is not taking care of that sustained deviation which is letting the nose rise. Finally then is D or derivative. And this is, as we talked about, we can think of this as the speed of how quickly things are changing. Derivative then, the easiest thing to do with this is have a really hard change of attitude and just to see whether or not you get a little flutter, which is indicative of whether or not the control loop is a little bit fast or a little bit slow. The way to do this then is to fly along in fast forward flight, have a reasonably high throttle, 75-80%, and then quickly drop the throttle to below half and pull the craft up, ready to pump the throttle and reverse the direction. As it is stopping and changing direction, what you're looking for is a flutter. If you see the flutter, then you can adjust D up a little bit, and that improvement in the performance and the reaction should reduce that flutter. If by doing that actually makes it worse, that means you've got too much derivative, and it actually needs to be a little bit below where it is right now. The thing with this is, of course, that you're checking P, I and D with things like self level off. You are checking them in standard modes because you are looking at the basic P, I, D settings. So for integral, if it was on self level, then the craft would automatically self level. You'd never get that. So you want a rate mode to test all this stuff in. So now we've talked about what P, I and D actually do as part of a PID loop and also the three simple ways that we can fly to check whether or not P, I and D are at the right level. There's a couple of things we need to talk about before we close the video. First of all is that this is an iterative process. I would always, if I was doing it myself, start and do P first, then I, then D and then I go back and check P I and finally D again because what you tend to find is that if you can increase the derivative or the D value up a little bit to make the speed of the reaction a little bit faster you can sometimes then get back to proportional and find that you can crank that up a little bit as well because in conjunction with the D the proportional and derivative working together actually allow you to have a faster reaction that gets back to where you need it to. So I would say that it's a slightly iterative process. A couple of times around that loop will give you a good tune. Three or four times that loop around that loop will give you a great tune. The code in every flight controller and version is different. Be aware that if you are using version 2.3 of MultiWii and go up to 2.4, if there are changes to things like the PID loops, how they're implemented and how they work, you can't just copy and paste your PID settings across and expect them to work. They probably won't. The amount of change that you need to make in order to get these numbers perfect changes with the board and firmware type. Read the release notes. As we said at the top, sometimes changing the numbers by 0.05 on things like integral or derivative is enough to make all the difference. And they're a perfect increment to change to try the flight again to see if you've got it perfect. On other boards, it might be twice that. It might be 10 times that read up and see what's right for the board you're using. Some controllers like the NAS A32 actually have different PID loops that you can choose from. It's inherited from some from the MultiWii. There's enhanced MultiWii. Uh, there are different versions. There's four or five different PID setups that you can choose from. 
not everybody will like the feel and the way that the PID loops behave. So if you've got things like a NAS A32, a great option is to run through each of them, select each in turn and go for a flight. Find the one that feels the closest to what you want and then tune that one because they all behave slightly differently. Some of them work better on some frames than others. The only way to try that out with your particular setup, your balance motors and props and your configuration is to actually try it on your board. The last thing I'd say about this is you don't always have to tune the model. This isn't something that you religiously have to do every time you've built one. Particularly with the latest generation of boards and firmware, it's getting a lot easier. Getting a P, I or D value, anything from 50 to even 100% away from where it needs to be, the system will still perform really well. So if you are a new pilot and you take the CC3D or the NASI32, pop it onto your 250 racing quad and get out to the field and have a flight and you like the way it feels or it's good enough, you know what? Then you don't have to spend the two or three hours in an afternoon working through the PID programming and optimization setup to get it perfect. If you're a hardcore racer and you want it to feel absolutely perfect, then why not? The time that you'll spend tuning it in maybe give you that competitive edge. The last thing I'll talk about is auto-tune. Some of these boards have an auto-tune feature. You need to be a little bit careful with it. The auto-tune on things like the APM will get it reasonable. Uh, it's kind of the equivalent to going around the PID setup once yourself, maybe twice. Um, it isn't as good as a full-on manual tune because it's trying to tune it back to a internal standard. It might not, that internal standard might not be the way that you prefer to fly. The auto tune on the NASI 32 has got some challenges and I've heard some real horror stories of it over pushing P so that it over oscillates and falls out of the sky and other boards have similar problems as well. So I would say if you want to auto tune, have a go at it. Be ready to click out of auto tune mode at the first sign of something untoward happening but now hopefully you've watched the video, you understand a little bit more about what P, I and D do as part of a PID control loop and also the ways that you can check whether or not P, I and D values are where you need them to be. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.